quantum consciousness. There are many different ideas about what creates a conscious thought. Some people have the idea that it is actually a result of the workings of the neurons in the brain, where other people think that the neurons are actually receivers, antennas, for universal consciousness. There are researchers out there like Roger Penrose and Stuart Hammerhoff who believe that the microtubules and the neurons in our brain act as receivers for a universal field of energy. In those microtubules, in the tubulin, the inside of the microtubules, there is this benzene or aromatic ring in tryptophan. Our aromatic rings that exist throughout our body, in our melanin, in our neurotransmitters, in our steroid hormones like estrogen and progesterone, cortisol, this six-sided ring is specialized to receive frequency information, especially light. When you look at the structure of this aromatic ring, this six-sided ring, three sides have a double bond, creating what's called pi electrons. Six pi electrons in these three double bonds. And these pi electrons are different than other electrons. They are not deeply bonded with those atoms. They are free to dissociate. They are free to move around that ring, creating an electrical current. They have a magnetic pull. They also are free to be donated to other atoms so that they can transfer electricity and they can transfer charge. Now, Penrose and Hammerhoff came up with the orchestrated objective reduction theory of consciousness, saying that this dimer in tubulin, this tryptophan, is able to superimpose quantum superimpose with the energy of the field and when that collapses that gives us a conscious thought and there are many other theories out there the quantum theory of consciousness looking at how our microtubules act as receivers for this universal field of energy there has been research out there finding that there is this 40 hertz phase oscillation or vibration in the brain that's happening in sync in the different compartments of the brain, the different lobes of the brain. And what that implies is that it's not the actual workings of those different lobes. It is connected. It is receiving and communicating with a universal field. And it's exciting to see some of these theories and how they pull in these aromatic rings, for me especially, because it gets us back to the work of Albert St. Georgie and this idea of bioelectricity and this idea that our body is not just a chemical mechanical being, it also is an electrical being dealing with frequency information. And when we say frequency, Frequency information, we mean vibration, we mean oscillation. When we speak of light, we usually think of visible light, but then the electromagnetic spectrum, visible light is just a narrow band of that spectrum. There is ultraviolet light, there is infrared light, there are gamma rays and x rays and terahertz and radio waves. All of these wave forms of energy travel as a wave and they carry energy and information. When we're looking at an electrical field and that conduction of electricity and energy, as it flows, it creates a transverse magnetic field, creating an electromagnetic field. And the energy that's held in waves, we can call frequency. And it doesn't have to just be isolated to the electromagnetic frequency. It can be sound. It can be the flow of protons. It can be the spin of an electron or a proton or an exciton, any kind of vibration or oscillation can transfer information. And this six-sided aromatic ring that's so pervasive throughout our body and that easy structured water that lives in our body that Albert St. Georgie predicted before Gerald Pollack, Professor Gerald Pollack out of the University of Washington first identified it in the early 2000s. When water comes up to a surface, it takes on a different structure. 
structure. And Pollock proposes that it takes on this hexagonal, six-sided ring lattice formation. And as one sheet of this easy water starts to build against our surfaces, it acts as a template for more sheets to build and to grow in width, growing that easy structured water that's negatively charged and as it builds it pushes out a positively charged proton right outside of that negatively charged easy water creating a battery so we have this beautiful idea of what biology looks like beyond the chemical mechanical model that is still being taught in medical schools and schools across the globe it gives us an idea of how the body works with electricity, how it works with frequency, and how it works with resonance. These six-sided benzene or aromatic rings are resonant. They have resonant qualities, meaning that they can match frequency, like two tuning forks where they're tuned at the same frequency. You strike one, even if the other one isn't right next to that tuning fork. If it's far away, it still rings out that same tune like Irina Kosick and her model of the resonant recognition model where proteins and that easy structured water that lines them are able to communicate and create biological action from frequency resonance. It's absolutely fascinating. If you like this content, let me know down below, subscribe, and stay tuned for more.